You know that relatable moment when this is the third time you've tried to make the same video and you're trying not to have a heat stroke in a cardboard box? Wait, you don't know what that's like? I'm crazy? <laughs> On a serious note, though, um, I've new set totally not made out of cardboard uh, i'm also trying a new mic and a new camera hopefully the new camera will be good i don't imagine the new mic is going to be that much of a difference but someone complained about the sound quality and granted i always wanted a mic or at least i always needed to change to a mic setup because before i was recording with my iphone and that's obviously not going to be permanent once i get a new camera uh, and the camera may have decent audio quality i don't know here, you know what? This is the audio quality of the camera. And if you don't like it, then tough. Because I'm gonna try to keep this brief, although I guess you guys probably don't mind if I rant all too much. Because unless you are someone who is so extremely bored that you decided to watch a video about a guy talking about his political affiliations and you don't even know the guy, then I imagine you have some vested interest in me. So I'll try to keep this rant short, but going forward, I, I was gonna say I appreciate input, but we all know that's a bold-faced lie. I don't. And I'm gonna try not to just shout at people in the comments, but please do not recommend changes for audio or video quality. Because, I, like, there's impolite things that I could say, like, I imagine you don't know what you're talking about. The audio quality before wasn't that bad, besides maybe some reverb because I was away from the mic. But, like, a lot of issues I've ran into because I've already bought a, a different camera for this, but it was a webcam. Issues I have with that is like, yeah, it's a really good webcam that will record high quality video, but it requires a decent computer to run. So now what am I going to do? Go out and buy like a new computer just to make this video? Like that's the thing that I imagine a lot of you aren't thinking about. It isn't as easy as, hey, just fix your audio. What do you mean fix the audio? Magically take away the reverb? Go buy a $200 microphone just for people to still complain because I watch videos like Windigoon's videos and no offense to him but his videos will be like and today's iceberg we're counting down icebergs we're gonna go talk about the most obscure iceberg and then also talk about a bunch of children being brutally tortured to death and it'll traumatize all of us and nobody complains that he doesn't press just a single button on Audacity that is, like, noise reduction. But then I get someone who's like, the audio's bad, and that's, like, that's, like, the nitpicky part. The god-honest truth is kind of what I've gotten into about the whole money, where it's, like, more than just me not agreeing with you, more than you being wrong, there are instances where you can say, hey, this needs to change, and my response will probably be, yeah, I know. Like, I actually have a good amount of expertise in digital production. I just can't pull thousands of dollars out of my ass to put into videos. So video quality is a me thing that you guys don't ever need to be concerned about. I know that sounds extremely condescending, but you guys genuinely do not know how much time and money I have already spent on all this just to have people tell me that it isn't good enough when it's better than most people's production quality. I will gladly take input on like if you guys want to see more quizzes like this, but no, just that's kind of annoying. Like, I already was buying these things when I saw the comment, and it's like, I, I'm getting there. I can't just <laughs> crap out an entire studio in one go. <laughs> Anyways, that's the rant. Um, obviously testing the new camera. Hopefully it'll be good, but let's get to the quiz. Because I think it's kind of obligatory for me to take a political compass test like this. I mean, I've already taken some in the past, this specific test and, like, the five values test. And I've posted about my results, but I haven't ever actually, like, gone through it on camera, which I think is interesting. Because if you've ever taken this test, you know, it's a horrible test. Most of them are. Most of them are basically, uh, do you like communism? No? Then you're a fascist. And it's just honestly laughable. I mean, for example, enough piddling around, let's get to it. The first question is, if economic globalization is inevitable, it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interests of transnational corporations. Like, I imagine that question is incredibly easy to answer if you are a leftist ideologue, but uh, a common theme that you're going to see with me is I'm maybe a bit more left-leaning than people seem to think. That's why sometimes in the past I more so identify as being like center-right or center. But, you know, I'll look at a question like this and I'm like, yeah, it's bad that companies can screw over people. And to be fair, I don't even think that that's being center. I think everyone agrees with that, and that's just sort of the straw man that the left creates of the right. Because the unfortunate truth is, like, what do we specifically mean when we say it should? You know, what are we saying is the obligation of government? Is it voluntary? Is it 
whatever. And also the idea here that it says that it should serve humanity. What are these transnational corporations? Are they inhuman? That's very othering. I thought this was Pride Month and we're supposed to support the trans community. <laughs> Is that like a, a dad joke? Is that a bad dad joke? But I guess kind of coming back to my rant, maybe that's not even center, maybe that's more third positionist, where I really hate LARPers from the left and the right, and I imagine I'm going to come back to this point a lot, but you'll have LARPers from the left and the right. I'm talking like communists and anarcho-capitalists and even some libertarians. Because you'll have like over here on the left, oh no, businesses, I hate businesses, and then over here on the right you'll just have, oh government, I hate governments. Like why? You're just getting upset at like titles and names arbitrarily and superficially. What is it that's actually bad about transnational corporations? Because yeah, like if they screw people over, that's bad, but it isn't, again, it isn't inhuman entities screwing people over, it's people screwing over people. And it just seems like sort of a contradiction to say that these two things are in opposition, when really they're not. Transnational corporations are the interests of specific people, maybe not people as a whole. So I just, I find questions like this a bit ridiculous. I'm going to say disagree. I'd always support my country whether it was right or wrong. No, that's stupid. You shouldn't support your country if it's wrong. That is a strongly disagree. I'm not going to support, you know, that guy. Somebody's going to clip that. No one chooses their country of birth, so it's foolish to be proud of it. It depends on what you're proud of and why. And especially foolish. I'm just going to say disagree right there because of that. Because obviously then we are saying that there are instances where you can or should be proud of the country you're born in. You know, if, it, if you're contributing to society, if your society is good and moral or helps people, if you have some meaningful connection to society that warrants that pride. But just being like, oh, I was born in America, so I'm happy to be an American. No, I'm happy to be an American because it's better than a lot of other places in the world, but other than that, it's pretty shit. Our race has many superior qualities compared with other races. Are you a racist? No, strongly disagree. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. In some instances, and I know, you know, this is a wise proverb, so people are going to hate me dissing on it, but it's kind of narrow-minded. This is basically saying, you know, this is your less enemy, so you should... <laughs> be friends and it's like well yes and no friend is a strong word i mean we can compromise in this one instance to achieve what is best for everyone if this evil truly is the worst evil but that's just it it depends on whether there's a worse or evil or you know i really wouldn't say that you want to make your enemy your friend even though i get it's a proverb whatever but it's just kind of silly i'm just gonna go disagree Military action that defies international law is sometimes justified. Well, you put sometimes, so you pretty much immediately have my vote of confidence. <laughs> because there's basically always exceptions to the rules. And let's be honest, the UN, all international law, is a complete joke. I don't know if, like, it would ever be justified to torture people, but, like, sometimes justified? Sure. There is now a worrying fusion of information and entertainment. Yes, and I'm a part of it. And this is basically why I created my page. Or not created my page, because I was a comedy page before I started doing politics and philosophy. But the reason I got into politics was because I kept seeing people making just stupid, stupid jokes about politics. And I was like, you are oversimplifying a complicated issue. You need to stop you know, making fun of people that disagree with you. And then I got into it and I started to realize, and I've changed a little bit, but only a little bit, I realized that these people gained that confidence because people stopped making fun of them. So, I mean, this is another one of those issues where people who disagree with me are going to be like, oh, you're a hypocrite, but I think it's justified to merge entertainment and information when it's actual information, not misinformation. I do think that there is still a bit of a caveat to this, which is something I try to explain all the time and hopefully have people understand why I'm so condescending, which is probably it doesn't help when I put that in quotations, but I don't really disagree with contextual statements. If you saw a TikTok video I made recently, I kind of talked about this. There's a difference between like content truth and structural truth. I disagree with people who make statements that are self-contradictory and deny the very nature of truth, like subjectivism, postmodernism, Marxism. So I believe that there is a certain level of humility that like these contextual truths need to be approached with that we can have an honest conversation without worrying about being humiliated by some dumbass making jokes 
And in that, I would say that there is actually a worrying uh, fusion of information and entertainment. It started with like Jon Stewart and all these Daily Show hosts, because that's like actual news, that's actual politics, and they gave a lot of people the impression of, ha ha, here's a funny joke, now you're well informed, and it's like, no, you actually didn't inform people, and now these people are too confident in their beliefs. So you know what, I'm gonna go strongly agree. People are ultimately divided more by class than by nationality. That is such a privileged American thing to say. In most of the world, there is no distinction between class and nationality. You know, your race, your culture, your religion, that in the rest of the world identifies your class. But I mean, I guess based on that, I would actually say, of course it does. Because in those instances, it's class and nationality. And in countries like ours, where we're more egalitarian, it's mostly just economic class that separates us. I'm gonna go strongly agree. Controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment. See, people always tell me that I, like, I think I know everything. No answer here. I mean, obviously I can't put no answer, so I gotta pull something out of my ass. I just out of instinct think yes, just under the notion that inflation kind of, like, screws all of us whereas unemployment only screws some of us i'm just gonna i'm just gonna click on agree because corporations cannot be trusted to voluntarily protect the environment they require regulation now here's where i upset a little bit of my conservatives although not really again because if you think back to like what the 80s and the 90s it was republicans passing environmental regulation uh, because as i see it a lot of my principles of course as you will probably see in a bunch of my videos, are based on uh, classical liberalism. And so that's, you know, John Law, contractionalism. The idea that we're all in a natural state, just sort of doing whatever we want, except when it involves someone else. And when it involves someone else, then you get into uh, legislation. You know, you don't want me stabbing you to death. <laughs> I don't know why my mind always goes to the darkest examples. So we make laws against that. Here, why isn't that the same? You know, what someone does to the environment affects all of us. Now, I do think that some regulations on emissions can go really overboard, and I generally do try to side with less government regulation, but I, I'm, I'm just gonna say agree here. From each according to his ability to each according to his need is a fundamentally good idea. Now, this is, this is the prime example of what I really hate about this test just so nondescript if you don't actually know what this is referencing because if you if you don't know what this is talking about you read it and you're like well, okay from each according to his ability to each according to his need yeah we should take care of people's needs especially if people are able but then for those of us who know what this is this is communism <laughs> this is in reference to communism so the question really just is do you support communism no and again if this said like from each according to his ability to each according to his need voluntarily yeah i 100 percent that that's a good idea in theory but it can never truly be implemented because nobody's going to voluntarily do that so when you involve the government then you're just setting up a perfect opportunity for you know corporate and government mutualism i.e crony capitalism or state corporatism the thing that we all hate but for whatever reason the left is just like no, we're going to do it again, but it's not going to result in that again, <laughs> even though it does every time. So strongly, strongly disagree. The freer the market, the freer the people. Yeah, of course. Strongly agree. It's a sad reflection on our society that something as basic as drinking water is now a bottled, branded consumer product. I don't care. I mean, what do you mean by sad reflection? A, re a reflection of what? That people can do that? Because it's not as though you can't get tap water. So what is it reflecting? That people buy water that's the same as other water? I'm sure that some leftist reads this and is like, this makes perfect sense, but it's just like emotional buzzword. What is, what am I supposed, what is the reflection? What is sad? I'm going to go with strongly disagree. Land shouldn't be a commodity to be bought and sold. I just had to burp. I wasn't going to say I was agreeing. Um, there is some sentiment to that that I find reasonable. Especially you go back to John Locke and you go to original appropriation. I think a lot of those ideas never anticipated a world where every ounce of property was owned and you couldn't go anywhere and just be a self-made man. But at the same time, if we're talking about original appropriation, then if someone puts work onto a land or buys the land, no, you shouldn't have a right to just take it. I think land is something that 
could should should be bought and sold. So I'm going to go strongly disagree. It is regrettable that many personal fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing to their society. You know what? Actually, yeah. Based on the wording here, and maybe I'm just crazy in answering questions how they're actually like presented to me, is it regrettable? I do think it's regrettable. I think people should try to contribute something to society. Obviously, if this question mentioned something about legislating that, I would be totally against it. But is it regrettable? Do I like people causing the housing crisis because they're greedy bastards? No, that is regrettable. So, I, I mean, sure. Just watch, because that one question, it's going to be like, oh, you're a massive leftist. Protectionism is sometimes necessary in trade. So, like, tariffs on other countries? I mean, again, you threw in the word sometimes, so I imagine in some cases it's probably better than starting a war. So, like, yeah. You know, if you have, like, a country that's committing war crimes and you want to not support that, yeah, sure. I, I like, I mean, in other instances, I, I guess maybe there is some need. I don't know. The only social responsibility of a company should be to deliver a profit to its shareholders. So again, I believe earlier I sort of implied, um, you know, that there isn't really a distinction between people and businesses. Businesses are made up of people. And fairly often, especially I think in the course of this quiz, I've talked about how individuals have an obligation to some greater moral standard. So, no, a business would have a small obligation to a certain moral standard. I don't know how much that moral standard should be enforced, but if you're just talking about what responsibility that company should have, there's more than just making a profit. So I'm just going to go with disagree. The rich are too highly taxed. Actually, yes, they are. I think this is an issue that not a lot of people on the left understand when people on the right talk about this. It's like, we're, we aren't like, oh, yay, give rich people more money. It's more like, well, you, you tax them and they're just going to take it out on the poor. You know, history may have shown that trickle-down economics doesn't exactly work, but like trickle-down punishment sure as hell is a thing. So yeah, the rich are too highly taxed, especially like upper middle class that, you know, try to establish small businesses and we're just incentivizing them to not. And we should really stop doing that. Those with the ability to pay should have access to higher standards of medical care. I mean, like, yeah? Let, let's assume that we bring in this marvelous utopia, as they claim, of universal health care. If someone wants to go out, and let's say we still have some form of privatized health care, are you just going to be like, no, you can't. You can't get better health care. <laughs> I think that's just silly. Like, I know the emotional thing that this question is supposed to imply, and apparently that's all the left is, according to this test. But it's just, it's, it's ridiculous by any standard. Yeah, of course. Governments should penalize businesses that mislead the public. Sure. I really want to have a conversation and just listen to what goes through the mind of, like, an anarcho-capitalist who would say otherwise. <laughs> like... That's a clear violation of, of a social contract. You can't, you can't just do that. Especially if it, like, if it could cause harm to an individual. You can't. Like, I don't understand why anyone would be like, yeah, let's just allow that. Strongly agree. A genuine free market requires restrictions on the ability of predator multinationals to create monopolies. Uh, is this by definition? Because by definition, no, that's like the opposite of capitalism. That's not free market at all. Or is this what I want to be true? And I don't necessarily agree with this. Obviously, monopolies are a problem. But again, like, I'm pretty sure there are antitrust laws in place already, and they do jack diddly. It's almost as if the people in power are being paid by these multinationals. Oh, you know, you don't want to strengthen that mutualistic relationship between government and business. Because then you completely remove the power of the vote by believing that politicians actually care about your opinions and your beliefs and representing your views, while simultaneously removing the power of the dollar by giving them power of companies. Although, I guess that's just punitive power, but, like, they could break up monopolies that are predatory to other monopolies. I, I, just, I can't believe I just said predatory. I'm letting this test convince me of its leftist wording. Competitive. <laughs> monopolies compete with other monopolies in order to lower prices. Although I guess it wouldn't be a monopoly, it would be a duopoly. But, 
that's just pedantic. I'm gonna go with disagree because I don't I don't fully disagree with antitrust laws, but at the same time, it's like in most instances you should just let the market do its work. Abortion, when the woman's life is not threatened, should always be illegal. Yes, without question. I mean, I don't know what else to say other than going on a long tangent of the several bad arguments that pro-choicers make and, you know, like the concepts of contractualism, um, virtue ethics, uh, consequentialism, deontology, from how all these perspectives, this is a bad thing that you shouldn't do, <laughs> but a lot of people are just socialized into believing that it is because, um, the Supreme Court came along and, you know, used its power um, unconstitutionally to just make this the law of the land. And so for the past 50 years, people think that abortion is acceptable when you look at other countries, and they don't believe that at all. I mean, they believe that now because of virtue signaling and because of the internet. But if you look at their laws, they have like 14-week restrictions. And nobody is, nobody is as crazy as we are here in America. And nobody throughout history has been as crazy as we have been recently. I mean, for example, the natural philosophers, as far as I remember, uh, for example, thought that it was okay up into the point of quickening, but at the point of quickening, then it was a person, and you shouldn't kill people. And if they were presented with modern technology, you know, you get an EEG re that registers above brain death at, like, week six. So, you shouldn't kill people. Yeah. <laughs> Strongly agree. <laughs> All authority should be questioned. Yes. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Yes. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna put agree. Because, I mean, I believe in tit-for-tat when it comes to game theory, but in some aspects, even if you're being completely self-serving in your view of morality, being a moral egoist, you need to think, uh, you know, further ahead than being so nearsighted. Yeah, it feels good right now to get revenge, but is that really what's best for society, for you, whatever? But at the same time, Actions have consequences. Actions need to have consequences. So yeah, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. But with some exceptions. Taxpayers should not be expected to pop up any theaters or museums that cannot survive on a commercial basis. Here again is where, like, I kind of differ. Not from the right, but, like, I, I tend to go to leftist schools of thought, but I want to reimagine them. I want to re-envision them. Because I 100% agree that taxpayers should not be expected to pop them up. But at the same time, there is social good that can come through institutions like these. So if we can just think of a different way to fund these that aren't necessarily draining on taxpayers, then absolutely we should work on that. But I guess the wording as is, should they be expected to prop them up? I think I said popped up before, didn't I? No. Schools should not make classroom attendance compulsory. What the hell does that mean? Does that mean that you're forced to go to school or that if you're going to school, then you should be compelled to go to class? Because if you've committed to going to school, then yeah, you should uphold that obligation. But if you haven't committed to going to school, then no, they shouldn't force you to go to school. I mean, like, it's such a weirdly... All of these are always such weirdly vague questions. Um, I'm just gonna go with disagree. All people have their rights, but it is better for all of us that different sorts of people should keep to their own kind. <laughs> Had us in the first half, not gonna lie. Um, am I a racist? No. Clarify different sorts of people. Are we talking culture? Are we talking race, ethnicity? I'm just, I'm just gonna go strongly disagree. <laughs> Good parents sometimes have to spank their children. Strongly agree. It is better to have a child that hates you than an undisciplined brat that you'll find dead in a ditch somewhere once he moves out of your house. So like, sure, hate me. <laughs> it is natural for children to keep some secrets from their parents. I mean, it's natural, but should they do that is, is the question. Should they do it or is it just, is it natural? I'm just, I guess I'm just gonna go with agree because yeah, that's, Something that kids sometimes do by inherent nature. Possessing marijuana for personal use should not be a criminal offense. Yes. And I mean, I don't want to say that as if that's like an easy decision, because this is actually something I struggle with. Uh, I don't know about marijuana specifically, but, you know, is drug use something that we should worry about in terms of social decay and social value? Or is it something we should allow? But I mean, looking at this specifically, if the entire idea of criminalizing drug use is that we want to save people from themselves? Why are we putting them in prison with hardened criminals? 
Like, if you want to continue to wage the war on drugs, you know what, I'm kind of right there with you, but we need to stop doing this, at the very least. This is just ridiculous. Like, maybe a fine, but even then, we were talking about poor people and you're just, you know, adding gasoline to the fire. But it, it definitely shouldn't be, like, a criminal offense. You shouldn't face jail time for just owning a little bit of weed. I'm gonna go strongly agree. The prime function of schooling should be to equip the future generation to find jobs. No, the prime function of schooling should be to educate people. Though I guess when you're talking about the applications of that education, you know, it should be suitable for life, and in life you go get a job. But I, that is something that, you know, that's something that I was homeschooled because of. My parents didn't want to raise me to just be a cog in a machine. They wanted me to be someone who could think for himself. Now, I'm not entirely sure that they were the ones who accomplished that, but here we are. So I'm going to say disagree. People with serious inheritable disabilities should not be allowed to reproduce. Do you support eugenics? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> Actually, there are, I don't know if this is technically eugenics, but you want a solution to this. Why don't we work towards, you know, helping these people with, uh, inheritable disabilities so that way their children don't inherit those disabilities. That's how we deal with that, not by telling people that they can't be parents because like they have diabetes or because they have, you know, some other mental, or not that diabetes is mental, some other physical or mental condition. Yeah, you people with diabetes, you goddamn reet. The most important thing for children to learn is to accept discipline. Again, just like a weirdly vague question. To learn to accept, to be disciplined or accept discipline as in the concept itself. You know, there are instances where you shouldn't accept authority, but uh, just since this says discipline and yeah, dis discipline itself, the concept of self-discipline, for example, is one of the most important things in a person's life. So I'm going to go um, agree. There are no savaged and civilized peoples, there are only different cultures. Well, I'm glad that you included the word culture there so you can know that I'm not a racist. No, there are uncivilized cultures, savage cultures, and by extension, people who follow those savage cultures are savages. I make no apologies for that. I have some Native Americans, so I think I, I, get, the, I get the pass. But yeah, no, that, that is absolute cancer that ideology the uh, cultural relativism it was just a gateway to the world we're living in where we're like oh accept people for who they are except if you're a christian conservative your culture is lesser than everyone else's strongly disagree those who are able to work and refuse the opportunity should not expect society's support i kind of am conflicted with that what is the point of society then society is supposed to be there to help you I do think that implies that you need to put in if you're going to take out. And so, especially with the word expect, I'm going to say strongly agree. When you are troubled, it's better not to think about it, but to keep busy with more cheerful things. That depends on what's troubling you. You should try to think of a solution, and if it can be fixed, then fix it. I mean, if it's not something you have any control over, then yeah, I guess. Not really any point in worrying about things that are out of your control. But I can also see that as being, you know, an easy excuse for someone to say, well, it's out of my control, I can't do anything. It's like, you probably can and you probably should. So I'm going to go ahead and go with strongly disagree. First generation immigrants can never be fully integrated within their new country. What does that even mean? That they can't fit in? That they aren't allowed to belong, that they feel culture shock. What is that? I'm just gonna go strongly disagree. What's good for the most successful corporations is always ultimately good for all of us. I believe I said this earlier in the video, trickle-down economics does not work. That's something that I think some conservatives find as a touchy issue, but I think even Reagan himself admitted that it didn't work. And for example, if I said, you know, state corporatism, would you agree that that's good for us? So no, not everything that's good for corporations is good for the individuals. I am, however, just because I don't trust this test to understand what it's saying, going to put disagree instead of strongly disagree. No broadcasting institution, however independent its content, should receive public funding. I really hate how this entire test is worded, because I imagine public means government, but I just read that and I'm like, why, why do they hate PBS? <laughs> I'm just going to put a small agree on that. Our civil liberties are being excessively curbed in the name of counterterrorism. I mean, 
I don't really think they do it in the name of counterterrorism anymore. They mostly just do it because they feel like it. But, uh, sure, strongly agree, I guess. I don't know if that confidence exactly says strongly agree, but I, I, I mean, I guess I agree. A significant advantage of a one-party state is that it avoids all the arguments that delay progress in a democratic political system. That's not what democracy is! Those conversations, those discussions, the sharing of ideas, that's what democracy is supposed to be. It's a big ol' fat disagree. I mean, a one-party system is essentially fascism. Although the electronic age makes official surveillance easier, only wrongdoers need to be worried. I mean, like, not technically wrong. But at the same time, I do believe most of these conspiracy theories that the government is slowly going to try to take over the world and enslave all of us, so... I mean, there's some, some need for concern, so I'm going to say disagree. The death penalty should be an option for the most serious crimes. It should be an option for every crime. I have a castle doctrine view on capital punishment, and I'm not talking about my home is my castle. I'm talking Frank Castle. Strongly agree. <laughs> In a civilized society, one must always have people above to be obeyed and people below to be commanded. I mean, that's like technically true because that's just the hierarchical nature of reality. But this implies that it's a necessity, which I don't think is true. I think you can be cooperative. Are we to that point now? No. Most people are so stupid that they do need people to tell them what to do. Again, I mean, like there's so many issues at play here where it's like, if you say that people are stupid, then so are the people in charge. So you're, you're, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. I'm just gonna say disagree because I feel like it, I, I know. Abstract art that doesn't represent anything shouldn't be considered art at all. I mean, yeah. In criminal justice, punishment should be more important than rehabilitation. Punishment is so worthless. And you gotta understand, this isn't, this isn't being said by some bleeding heart person who really cares about humanity. I mean, rewind that last clip, Frank Castle. It's just by any standard of our place in the world, what is the good? What are you benefiting from punishment? Are you just making yourself feel better? It's just so short term, so short sighted, so material. I, I, I really, I truly do believe in rehabilitation. I know that sounds crazy after saying, you know, all criminals should die, but that's more my bitter belief that people don't change. They don't get rehabilitated, but that should be the goal is to rehabilitate them. Strongly disagree. It is a waste of time to try to rehabilitate some criminals. Yeah, strongly agree. The business person and the manufacturer are more important than the writer and the artist. No, that's not true at all. I mean, like, yeah, society could probably exist without... Actually, I don't even know if society could exist without the artist. Let me put it like this. Infrastructure could exist without the artist. You need the people who work on your plumbing, who work on your electricity. You don't really need writers and you don't really need artists. But a lot of invention starts out as art it starts out as all of this stories inspire us they they're basically the reason that we want infrastructure to live other than just being animals if anything the artist and the writer are the most important part of society because being expressive being psychological is what makes us human beings so i'm gonna go with strongly disagree mothers may have careers but their first duty is to be homemakers yeah i mean that seems fairly common sense. I know for whatever reason that's become a misogynistic thing to say, but I mean, especially if you preface that with may have careers, if you're a mother, you should raise your children. So, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, controversially, even if this wasn't worded so poorly, it was like, women belong at home or something like that, something more controversial, I probably would still agree. And my view on gender norms is a bit complicated because I don't I, how do I put this? If we say that gender norms help people find purpose in society, then isn't it a bit self-contradictory to enforce gender norms when they are causing harm? I think that is clearly, yeah, you shouldn't enforce harmful norms. So if a woman wants to be a businesswoman, you know, you gotta let her because it's, it's not going to be as beneficial as you may think to say, oh, well, she belongs in the kitchen. And I don't necessarily think that that's anyone's position. Certainly teenage girls online who think that that's what misogyny is 
But if you have the urge to start a family, as most people biologically do, it only makes sense that the person who develops milk, you know, is at home to feed the children that... <laughs> that drink the milk instead of trying to exist in some convoluted double life of being you know a homemaker and a businesswoman so yeah strongly agree multinational companies are unethically exploiting the plant genetic resources of developing countries plant genetic what is, what does any of this mean the natural uh, re natural resources? Seriously, who who worded this entire quiz? I mean, are they unethically exploiting? Maybe, so I guess it's true. But again, it's like, are you asking me to say that something should be done about it? Because maybe, but uh, you would have to be a lot more specific than a question I can barely read. So I'm just going to go, sure, agree. Maybe there's something unethical. Making peace with the establishment is an important aspect of maturity. No. <laughs> okay, moving on. Astrology accurately explains many things. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Strongly disagree. How does this tell me if I'm left, right, or authoritarian? Like, I, you cannot be moral without being religious. That simply isn't true. I don't really even like the implications of that because that implies that people are only doing things because of a reward or like I guess you could say it's because of an objective moral standard but then if that's true there could be other standards that are objective so I think that really for me always just goes back to like very authoritative very you know um, self-centered I don't like that the like I don't understand why religious people say that that, that isn't a good thing to say that's like saying I'm not good because it's good I'm good for such and such reason <laughs> that's just something that I never quite understand when people say that you know uh, morality comes from God are you saying that your God is capricious in arbitrarily assigning random moral values or are you saying you know in the now the analogy that people often use that he's a good father that he's doing things for our interest for our benefit then clearly morality exists for our own benefit it's just i don't know you can be objectively moral on the basis of like self-interest anyways charity is better than social security as a means of helping the genuinely disadvantaged yes I mean, I feel like that's sort of been proven, at least I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just an issue with the structure of government. It's better to give directly than it is to have a middleman that needs, by necessity, to take some of that resource and, as a consequence, have less resources given to the person that you wanted to give them to. So I'm going to go strongly agree. Some people are naturally unlucky. Luck isn't a thing strongly disagree it is important that my child's school instills religious values no if you couldn't tell by the previous <laughs> answers i don't want that i believe in a god i don't believe in your god and i don't want your religious values instilled in any child that i would ever have okay final page sex outside of marriage is usually immoral that adjective right there as usual pun intended is throwing me off because usually yes it is this is something that's always interesting to me because uh, you know from a secular position what is immoral about premarital sex i mean i can think of something that's immoral about uh, you know debauchery it's a non-virtuous activity it can lead to stds it can lead to unwanted pregnancies you know but in the confines of a committed healthy relationship what is wrong with premarital sex from a secular position, nothing. And the funniest thing is, in my studying of the Bible, being raised very Christian, I find the belief that premarital sex is a sin to be kind of silly, especially considering the context of the Bible, because you will never find a verse that says premarital sex is a sin. And, you know, I think there is the book of Ruth, right? About an older unmarried woman, and it does imply some some cultural stigma against premarital sex but for the most part i think the precedent set by the bible is that 
there isn't really a concept of premarital sex. Sex is the unification of two people as one flesh. That's like the traditional, I was going to say oral tradition, but that's probably not a good word choice here. You know, I don't, I think, I think there actually are verses, but generally it's just, you know, a tradition that's passed on, that that's what marriage is, the becoming of one flesh. So, uh, like, saying sex outside of marriage is like saying, um, non-blue, blue, non-red, blue, non red, red I don't know why I'm only thinking colors. It's like 10 o'clock, it's like 10 o'clock at night and I've recorded this video three times already. So I'm losing my goddamn mind. But it's just, it's a, it's a contradiction. There is no such thing as premarital sex. But is it a sin? Uh, technically in certain circumstances, yes. Because if sex signifies marriage, then, you know, not taking that vow between you, this woman, and God seriously is a, a bad thing, and then breaking that vow that you have made physically is another bad thing. But obviously that's just one religion, uh, not necessarily one I fully agree with. I, you know, there's some that reigns true there for me, but from a mostly, you know, non-biblical stance, is sex outside of a marriage immoral? Technically not, but it usually is. So I... I guess I go with agree, just because they got me with the adjective of usually, and I'm I'm a sucker for pedantics. A same-sex couple in a stable, loving relationship should not be excluded from the possibility of child adoption. I, I see no reason why not. I mean, even if you hate gay people, I would have to hope that you think that's better than nothing. Although, a lot of people confuse the foster care system and adoption agencies. There's not really that much of a problem with adoption agencies. Pornography depicting consenting adults should be legal for the adult population. Should be legal. I'm gonna have to say yes. I mean, you could argue its effects on society and the social consequences of having it in a society and say it's not something we should have in our society, but I believe that's just a little too tyrannical. When I say that um, we need to enforce a strict social moral order, I'm not talking about in people's homes, in people's private conversations. I'm talking about what people do between non-consenting individuals. We can put a whole bunch of regulation on this to sort of stigmatize it and, and try to keep it away from people, but at the same time, yeah, it should be legal. And I'm a coomer, so I'm going to click strongly agree. <laughs> what goes on in a private bedroom between consenting adults is no business of the state. I mean, like, if it's sexual assault, then yeah, that is business of the state. But in all other circumstances, uh, yeah, it's not the business of the state. Even though that being said, I still get to shame you if you're weird, so don't be a freak. No one can feel naturally homosexual. Okay, should I cause a little bit of controversy? Controversy. Controversy. I'm not against homosexuality, really. Not even in the capacity that some people say, well, I'm not against it, but just, you know, don't do it in front of me, or I am personally against it. No, none of that. But it's just something I've really come to terms with as an adult where... I used to think that it was wrong to enforce social norms onto other people because, you know, I knew that I never fit in with the norm, that I wasn't like most other people. I'm not like other girls. I'm quirky is apparently what I'm saying. But, you know, I never felt right saying that, oh, well, you shouldn't be gay. And I still wouldn't say you shouldn't be gay. But now I've come to realize as an adult, I'm like, wait a minute, not fitting into society has sucked for me. And so that kind of puts me in support of a lot of the anti-LGBTQ stuff, especially the T in LGBTQ, where I believe that, you know, I don't shame these people for being who they are. I don't even necessarily think that it's wrong for them to be who they are. But there needs to be some pushback on the idea of it being normal. Granted, we need to balance that with not stigmatizing it to the point of making these people's lives a living hell, which is difficult, and if I had to choose, I would rather choose to not stigmatize it and just accept it. But is it natural? No, like, not really. There's a hole specifically made for a specific object, and, and so, uh, no. <laughs> you know, this may make people mad, but I'm gonna go agree. Not strongly agree, just agree. There's some question of if they feel that way, but I, I don't know. These days, openness about sex has gone too far. Yeah. Now, drum roll, please. Let's see where you stand. What a surprise. I'm exactly where I always am. <laughs> I think according to that, I'm a little less authoritarian now, which is funny because people have been telling me that I've been on an authoritarian arc recently. Also, I think a little bit more left-leaning, even though I was like, you know what? Hate the gays. <laughs> That's obviously not what I meant, but I feel like a lot of people are going to interpret it that way. 
But uh, yeah, there you go. There's my political compass test results. You guys can go ahead and let me know if you want me to do another one of these, like the five value one. I think there are some philosophy ones, but those are usually terrible. It's usually like, oh, do you believe that you've known everything since the point you were born? No? Then you're an empiricist! Like, no, that's not how that works. That's just a test that was clearly made by an empiricist who doesn't understand what rationalism is. But uh, anyways, yeah, uh, there you go. Uh, that was my test. I still don't know how to end videos. Uh, I'm going to be working on this, hopefully. Uh, and it's like 10 o'clock. I'll edit this all morning and get it out the day you're watching this. Although you, some of you will not be watching this the day it comes out. So, outro.